are you doing? You scared me there a little bit. I haven't seen you guys in a while. Anyway, I'm Tom from Gordian Knot Project, and we're going to talk about what happened in 2020 and what you can look forward to in 2021 from GKP. But first, coffee. I love my coffee. When the year's coming to a close, I like to look back over that year. Look at all the different events, different things going on in my life throughout the course of that year, and ask myself one question. Is this working? My job, my friendship, my social life, my spiritual life. This gym is what I'm doing working. When it came to this channel, the answer was a resounding no. After being up a year and a half, I have about 60 subscribers. And while I'm thankful for each and every one of them, and I've worked very hard to get and keep each and every one of them, I want more than that. And I can do better than that. And I can bring you content that's more enjoyable than that. So I have to adjust. I have to change what I'm doing on this channel in 2021 in the hopes of making it a better channel in the hopes of being more entertaining, more informative, bringing you more of the content you want to see, and getting more people to click that subscribe button. So when I determine that what I'm doing in an area doesn't work, I have another question I need to ask myself. Why? Why will lead to the what? What do I need to change? What do I need to do that I'm not doing now? What do I need to do different? Before I can answer any of those what, I have to know why what I'm doing now is but this channel is a real simple answer. I've been pretending. I've been learning things from YouTube videos and then turning them around and making a video teaching you how to do it. Why would you watch that? That's stupid. And I've been pretending like this because I'm just learning myself. Yeah, I've been playing instruments since I was eight years old, but actually playing on stage three years at the beginning four or five years recently, that's it. And the stages I've been on are tiny. The stages I've been on recently, anyway, are tiny. Yeah, I have about 12 years of live sound work behind me. I can teach you some stuff there, but I don't have a place to video that because I would need a live band to play with to video that. But I can talk about the things that cross apply to the studio. I can talk about the fact that I've gotten a good drum mix a couple hundred times on live performances. Not that different than getting a good drum mix in the studio. The biggest difference between getting a good live drum mix and getting a good studio drum mix is in the studio you got too much time. I give myself three listens to the song to work on the drums. That's it. If I don't have it by the end of that third one, it's a bad recording. I can talk about that. I can make videos talking about that. I know what I'm talking about with that. However, here is what I'm going to do to be more real with you. Hope Caparoon released a video recently where he said, anytime you're thinking about making a gear acquisition, you should say to yourself, what is holding me back the most right now? If your guitar is a piece of crap, get a new guitar. If you don't have enough effects pedals to make the types of sounds you want to make and need to make, get more effects. So on and so forth. I've decided that I think that's a great approach, and I've asked myself that question in three areas. What's holding me back the most from a production perspective? What's holding me back the most from a songwriting perspective? And what is holding me back the most from a performance perspective? In music production, it's my monitor. You can see them right here. The other one's over here. They're both in shot. They are crap. Glenn Fricker reviewed these, and he said, I don't know how anybody can mix on these. They're so woolly, you can't even hear what you're mixing in the mid. I've been struggling with these monitors for two years. It's time for an upgrade. Saving up for a set of Cali LP6. I'll have them in about a month. What is holding me back the most in my song right? Creativity on the drums really holding me back in that area and I'm afraid to get creative on the drums when I'm writing a song because I'm not a very good drummer so I just keep reusing these same simple here is how I'm addressing that 
starting with the song I'm working on currently, the next backing track that will be out, I use a program drum beat to play along with when I'm recording just the individual part on whatever the first instrument is that I'm working. So maybe it's a guitar riff that I'm fleshing out into an entire part of the song. But as soon as I have that first instrument recorded in that part, the next instrument that I record is the drum. And I record live drums and lay those in from the word go when I'm writing the song. And that has, now that's freed me up because I'm actually playing the beats when I'm behind the kit. So I'm not scared to put a complex beat in there. I'm not scared I won't be able to play it. It's also a lot quicker to work that way than it is to sit here and program the beat one click at a time. And what's holding me back the most in performance, the answer is also drum. I need some work on my skills, my technique. Uh, my volume control, it's gotten a lot better already, but that needs work and I'm working on that when I do my compositional recordings and my demo recordings. I only use the overhead mics, the room mic, and the kick mic. So I have to play a much more balanced kit in order to get that to sound even good enough quality for a demo. The other thing that I'm doing is I'm going to start off the year by doing a challenge each month on the drum with myself. The idea is to get better through the challenges. And I'm gonna document those challenges. I'm gonna document the progress that I made because of them. And hopefully I can help some of you that maybe need some work on your drumming skills. You can take the challenges with me and we'll get better together. The first drum challenge that I'm taking is song a week. I'm gonna spend an entire month just working on one song a half an hour a day for seven days. 3.5 hours working on this one song over and over and over again throughout the course of the week. I'm gonna do that with four different songs. The four songs I'm gonna do it with are Proud Mary, Creedence Clearwater Revival version, Barracuda, Honky Tonk Woman, and Helter Skelter, the Beatles version. The reason I originally made this channel is because I wanted to write music. I wanted to make songs and put them out there for the world to enjoy. So in 2021, 12 new backing tracks throughout the course of the year. It's a very reasonable schedule for me to be able to. Plus, you'll get videos on those monthly challenges on the drum. You'll get at least one video every time I get a new piece of gear. And other than that, we'll have to see. But I'll tell you this much. In 12 months, I'm filming this on December 30th. I'll probably film the next one on December 30th because that's the kind of procrastinator I am. But in 12 months, We'll be back here, and I'll be looking at whether or not these things work. Talking about whether I need to adjust again or not. Until the next video, adios.